Tonight, we're gonna go over, is my home good for solar? We're gonna touch on these topics. Should you be looking at a roof mount, rooftop or a ground mount? Why is the age of your roof important? Why is the type of roof important when we talk, talk about solar? A utility bill, how we take your utility bill information and turn that into our solar proposal. We'll talk about different cash and financing options and then options for your house beyond a solar PV installation in terms of battery storage or electrical vehicle charging stations or electrical panel upgrade. And as I mentioned before, please drop your questions in the chat. We'll answer them at the end. We hope to have a lively Q&A session here. So let's dive right into the quiz. And with that, I'll click on our quiz button here. And you can follow along here. If you look in the chat, I'm going to drop in the chat a link to the webinar um, quiz. So you can follow along with your own answers to the quiz here. And Saxon, you want to start us off with the first question of the quiz. Yeah, thanks so much, Eric. It's always great to hear just all the cool things that we do. Sometimes you get so focused on the work you forget, and it's always nice to hear the, the reiteration of all the clear values and things like that. Um, so this is the quiz that we came up with. It's a really awesome way for you to figure out if solar with us is a really good fit for, for your home, for your business, whatever it might be. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the quiz and just explain each of these questions here. Um, it really is a very quick process. You can do it online. You have that uh, link in the chat right now. Um, if you want to do it later, that's great as well. Uh, but basically, first question, uh, we work in Illinois, Missouri. So we're going to figure out, make sure that you're in the state that we can operate in. Outside of Illinois and Missouri, we might be able to refer you to some great people. We just can't do the installation ourselves. The next question that we're going to have here is uh, basically what kind of living situation do you have? If you have a house or a condo or an apartment, it can change whether or not you can easily go solar. If you own your home, that's perfect. We'll figure out about your HOA or anything like that that might have restrictions. Uh, if you're in a, in a condominium kind of situation, you might have a kind of condo board that you'd have to check in with. Uh, and if it's an apartment, you most likely would have to own the apartment or get the approval for the, the owner of the apartment unit for them to go solar and for them to figure out that situation becomes a little bit more complicated. We definitely have done it several occasions in terms of multifamily properties, but it's the owner of that property that's going to be making that decision that gets the incentives, things like that. So let's say we live in a house right here. Now, this question, do you own your own home? Pretty much explained it. If you own your home, you have the rights to be able to make that improvement. And then the next question around where do you feel like your home is located? This will depend on uh, basically what kind of regulations or what kind of uh, tax incentives that you might be qualified for. So there's a lot of different complexities when it comes down to the solar, uh, the solar world, when it comes down to regulations and financing and things like that. And so as a project developer, it's my job to kind of get a sense of where you're located and how I can help explain the different things that are relevant to you. And it might not be relevant to talk about a rural incentive if you live in downtown St. Louis, for example. So let's pick one of those, Eric, and we'll see where we go next. Awesome, so first question of where do you want your solar system? As a project developer, I like to give people options. Sometimes people come in with a lot of perspective, like, oh, I would never want it on my roof because it's so bad to, to puncture holes in the roof. I can walk you through why that's actually really not the case, that we have a really excellent warranty. We have great systems, great technology, great labor staff who can really make sure that we put in those installations the right way. And sometimes people want it on the ground and it doesn't necessarily make sense on your property. What are the requirements? What are the issues? What are the challenge? So no matter how you answer this question, I'll make sure to review your site to give you a sense of where are we at? Does it really line up? But where you prefer it really does matter. I like to design systems for folks that make them happy. If it requires us pushing it out a little bit farther away from your home, it might be a little bit more expensive, but it might also be that much better for your, you know, your property. If you like to play soccer on an open field, you don't want to put maybe some solar right in the middle of that if you still want to kick the soccer ball around. So those kind of conversations are really helpful, but let's just put the roof there and let's just move on. Next question, how old is your roof? That is a way that we can determine whether or not we're going to recommend to you to have a replacement on your roof first before you go solar. Uh, basically, solar panels are incredibly efficient and they last for a really long time. They have 25-year warranties. 
They're able to withstand hail damage, usually up to golf ball size for 30 minutes. These things are more secure and, and safer, honestly, than most composite shingle roofs will be in that kind of a storm situation. However, uh, what we're noticing is that those solar can last so long, they can actually outlast the length of the roof. And if you have a roof that's 10 to 15 years old or maybe beyond that, you're probably going to look into maybe the cost of replacing that roof, depending on what kind it is, and doing that before you would go solar. This is kind of what we would say is you can make it work regardless, but you might have some things that we'd want to talk about first up front. As a company, we want to make sure that you're moving forward with this decision with all of the understanding of the costs, the challenges, the benefits, um, not just the things that make us look good, the things that really hold um, us accountable and make sure you understand that this is an investment that does have some you know, steps that you need to maybe go through to make sure it's going to work out. So let's say your roof has just been replaced less than five years. That's kind of a perfect time. You got plenty of time on that roof. We've worked with all these different kinds. So when it's asking you the material, we can pretty much do um, almost all of it. Tile roofs are really challenging in the solar world because it's really hard to match those things if they break. But we install on composite shingle, corrugated and standing seam metal, um, on this basically flat TPO for commercial. And this question is just going to make sure that we can work with your roof. And you can see what happens if we click on that. Perfect. It'll also ask you for the utility company. That allows us to get a sense of what kind of incentives might be available from that utility. Ameren, Illinois is different than Ameren, Missouri, which is different than some of the smaller cooperatives that exist. And this question is basically just seeing, are you one of the, the bigger ones that have a specific incentive or a specific policy in place that we want to let you know about? And so we'll say Ameren, Illinois for here for now. This here is a great question. It's one that really trips a lot of people up when they're going through this process, even by the time they talk to me as a project developer, is basically asking for a copy of your bill, your recent energy bill. And what this is used for is to scale how much electricity you use each month so we can determine how that solar is best designed to fit and really be able to supply your electrical needs. A lot of times people have concerns about their personal information, potentially that's on that bill. And that's something that we totally understand. We are very secure. We have multiple layers of security as a company, not only individually, but also with uh, just hiring security companies in terms of managing our internet profile and our technology as well. So you can definitely send this bill to us. If you feel more comfortable, you can also read that out to our project developers or our customer service folks, they'll be happy to record that and we'll enter it in on a monthly basis. If we don't have it, it's kind of like us not being able to know, um, you know how much solar you're really gonna need. Do we need two panels or do we need 200? We do need that information, but there's ways to make it sure that we can get you that quote, even without giving that personal information up at the top. And then the last question, have you lived in your home for less than 12 months? This is basically just determining whether or not that graph of your energy usage is going to be accurate for next year. It's also relevant to share with your project developer if you think there's going to be major changes. So let's say in the last, you've only lived in the house for 10 months. Since you don't have the two months of that usage, we're going to have a harder time sizing it. We'll just have to use an estimate. And then we'll come up with an estimate that we feel like is reasonable. And we'll just make sure to disclose to you that it is an estimate there. If you're going to purchase an electric vehicle or something like that in the future, we can always add more solar to this bid, even if it's more than what you're using right now, because you'll use more in the future. And then this question, um, are you interested in financing to pay for your solar rate? We have a ton of in-house financing option really here that, that is just incredible. We have tons of options for you. The one that we really prefer is our partner with Clean Energy Credit Union. They are a nonprofit that only does sustainability related financing. They have no prepayment penalties. They structure the loans in such a way that they uh, reduce the amount of interest that you'll have to pay because they take into account the federal tax incentive. They are just really incredible to work with in terms of the values that they have, in terms of the priorities that they have. Uh, and there's no hidden fees. There's no origination fees. There's no things that cause 
really a lot of people to lose trust in solar or lose trust in financing because things just get too complicated around the money. We understand that bills are tight. And one of the great reasons for going solar is the maybe potential savings that you might have. We don't want to get in the way of that. So if you want to bring in your own financing, um, either you have cash on hand or you have financing from a home improvement loan or something like that, you can totally use that. We're happy to work on that with you. If you want to use our partner with Clean Energy Credit Union, that's an incredible option too. And basically, this is just going to let us know we can share that information with you so you can make that informed decision. That next question here around the basically at battery storage, we offer several different solutions to be able to back up the energy that you're producing. Because obviously, sun goes down at night. Now, the way that we're creating all of our solar interconnections, your solar is going to be able to offset your production during the day. And at night, the way utilities operate is you're basically exchanging electricity backwards and forwards. But if the grid goes down, you want to be able to have power still in your system and you want to be able to use the power that you're generating um, during the, the evening when you're charging your car, let's just say, or you're running your dishwasher, you're running your TV. It's about the times where you're home and you're using your house, let's just say. So the battery storage is what's going to allow you to do that. We can always add solar uh, or we can always add batteries in the future. If you want to get a quote, I like to be able to present people both together. So if you want to go solar by itself or solar and batteries, here are the two different quotes. If you want to add batteries later, we're happy to talk about what that would look like. Uh, but we want you to have the options and feel like you have an informed decision there. And then we also offer the next question, are you interested in electric charging for your home? We offer several different kinds of electric charging and basically we're able to do it as part of your solar installation. We're already on site working with the electrical systems. We're happy to come in and also install either a one or a two car charging station. We use really great technology that allows you to really fast charge your vehicle. If you have an extension cord and you're plugging in with a two prong, it's going to take you about two days to charge that vehicle. But with these fast chargers, they're able to get really efficient, the direct hookup, and we're able to basically fold that in. So with your financing, tax credits, and things like that, it's all in one rather than having to go out and find. It also means that you get to support and utilize the really valuable and uh, trustworthy service that we're able to provide as vetted uh, contractors. We always like to hear what your reasons are for going solar. It helps me frame how the solar process can work and, and really emphasize the things that matter to you. Uh, there's a lot of folks who really care about the environment and who really want to do the right thing around climate change, around sustainability. And those are the folks that I really like to share. You know, for every kilowatt of solar you throw on your roof, you're saving about 40 trees a year. That's pretty incredible. People like hearing that. If you're really focusing on the financial savings, I want to focus as much as possible about how your bill will be able to be reduced for each given month, how you are going to be able to apply for multiple different kinds of incentives. I'll focus on that and give you more information so you can be able to, you know, basically understand based on your priorities how this decision will really affect that. And then our next question around how did you hear about straight up solar? That is really helpful for us to just know what's working when it comes down to, you know, our interactions with the community and with marketing. You know, for us, we are a business, but we're one that's based on our values. And we think that it's really important what we're doing around helping folks go solar. And so for us, we want to really participate in the organizations that feel like they're making an impact. So we also offer an incredible referral policy as well, where even if you haven't gone solar with us, if you recommend and refer your friends, family, random people on the street, if you let them know that Straight Up Solar is an awesome company and they mention your name during the contract process when they go solar, they'll basically be able to get a $500 referral check or you'll be able to get the $500 referral check, uh, which is basically there's no cap on that. So, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but we would love it if people went out and started getting their entire family signing up for solar. Um, We've had folks who felt inspired because they saw a baseball cap and had a conversation with someone at a baseball game, and that person ended up getting a $500 credit. So we always like to hear about that.
And then, and then that's actually- yeah, we basically just asked for contact information because we do need to get a hold of you to be able to connect around solar. Um, you know, your address is something that obviously, again, we're very secure about how we handle that. It's really helpful for me to be able to take a look at your site because basically what I can do is with an aerial site photo with Google images, and I can basically maybe one or two more photos of your site that you can take on your phone really easily. And then that electrical bill, I can get you an estimate usually within a handful of days. It's something that we wanna make sure that it's as easy as possible. And just a handful of things that you share with me using this quiz is a really great way to get that started. Thank you, Saxon. As you can tell, it's a very simple form, simple questions to ask. And this is how we get started is basically you fill out the form and it goes to our solar support specialist. They'll take that information you provided, your utility bill, roof mount or ground mount, what utility you're actually in, and have a little conversation with you to make sure that solar still is a good fit for your home. Our solar support specialists actually have the ability to take a look at a rooftop view and get a little bit of an estimate if, the, if you're in the right orientation for the sun. Uh, if you don't have enough shade, if all that kind of works out, our solar support specialist will pass you on to a project developer, just like Saxon. As Saxon mentioned, that's where he's really going to get into the nitty gritty details of he has your utility bill. He knows what uh, utility you're with. He knows where your house is located. He knows the orientation. He can start generating a proposal that has a system size mapped onto your house, how big it is, how much energy it's going to generate, and how much savings you're going to get. That's all going to come into a proposal. If you want to do cash or financing, the cash flow statements will all be part of your proposal. If you like what Saxon proposed to you and you sign a contract, you move into stages three through five of our process here. We are a turnkey solar installer, which means that we handle every single part of the solar installation. All you have to do once you sign the contract is sit on your couch and then wait for our team to show up. We're gonna handle the utilities. We're gonna handle the design work. We're gonna file that with city hall or the permitting agency. So you don't have to worry about any of that material. We're gonna get you onto the schedule and we'll give you an update of have we procured and acquired all the material for your for your installation. When's our crew coming out? That's all done with our project develop, project manager communication with you, keeping you up to date on where your project is on the schedule. Right now, we are uh, at about a four month to five month installation schedule here, but there's still plenty of time to sign a contract today and get in for the peak sun, sun months of 2023 here. Once you get on the schedule, we come out to your house and our highly trained installation crew, again, many of them are NABCEP certified, will come out to your house. A typical installation probably takes two to three days. Our crew is very respectful, making sure that we keep your home in good condition, your yard in good condition. We clean up after ourselves and um, we make sure that we are answering any of your questions that are going on on the job site. So once we finish the job, hopefully uh, everything should be working. 30 days later, you will get a bi-directional meter from the utility that allows you to do that net metering, trading your uh, extra energy back to the utility grid, and then you get credited that back onto your utility bill. So. Um, once you see your first bill, you open it up, you realize that you have a zero energy bill. You're gonna be so excited. You're gonna do our solar catcher pose and be so proud that you're catching the power of the sun onto your roof. And hopefully you'll be sharing the joy of solar to your neighbors here. So that's our process, our five easy steps to go solar here. And it all starts by doing that quiz. So I hope you all had time to kind of fill out the quiz as Saxon was walking you through that here. Uh, now we can uh, take any questions. If you want to drop any questions in the chat, or you can also afterwards reach out to Saxon directly at saxon.metzger at straightupsolar.com. We have a great website. Many of the webinars we've done previous to this are on our website, in addition to some great blog posts that talk about net metering, talk about how solar works, explains our warranty information. So I encourage you to go to straightupsolar.com here. So that's the bulk of our presentation tonight. Again, feel free to drop questions in the chat. Um, Saxon, I did have a question that came out in the chat here. Could you talk a little bit about some of the incentives that are available for people to go solar? Yeah, yeah. So there's two real main incentives um, that are gonna, gonna occur for folks. The first is the uh, federal incentive. Um, it basically is a 30% tax credit, which means that for 
the entire cost of your installation, 30% of that is going to be able to flow back to you as a tax credit. We are not tax professionals, and we always encourage you to check in with your, you know, your, your tax professional, the person you file taxes with. But the way that that works is you have up to five years to claim that dollar for dollar amount. And so let's say you know it's a very large amount and you don't have that amount of tax liability, you can take it out in a couple of different years um, and you know kind of parcel it out. Uh, but it's based on your tax liability, which is the amount of taxes that you owe over the course of the whole year. So even if you pay taxes every month or every time you pay a paycheck, that's part of your tax liability. So it doesn't mean that you have to have all that tax debt at the end of the year. It could mean that it's going to offset all the things that you've already paid and then you'll get that back as a credit. So that's the way the tax credit works. And then the state incentive for Illinois is the, uh, it's called the SREC program. And it basically is a, think of it almost like a carbon credit where they have uh, basically, uh, it's slightly different from your energy. It is the uh, dollar assigned value of the green energy component. Of, of what you're producing. Basically the fact that it's renewable energy going onto the grid. So you're able to get as much of that back as you're able to produce in a given year. And we estimate it out for 15 years. And basically the state of Illinois, if you're located in the state of Illinois, of course, writes you a check for that entire amount, either up front or over seven years, if you have a very, very large array. And so what that's able to do is offset a significant amount because it's based on your production of your system uh, and how efficient it is. It can really change based on location, sizing, and the dollar amounts change based on the size of the system as well. So it can range from anywhere from 10% to 40% um, or anywhere in between. A couple of the other smaller incentives that uh, also kick in, they're really important too. If you live in Ameren, Missouri territory, you're able to get an incentive of about 25 cents uh, a watt, which basically ends up being uh, anywhere from, you know, obviously it's based on the size of your array, but it could be anywhere from several hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. Usually it's anywhere from five to 12 percent or so of the cost of an installation there. You also have different incentives from the other utilities. Ameren, Illinois has a battery based incentive and a smart inverter based incentive. Not all of those might qualify or you might not be qualified for, but they're all something that your project developer will be able to help you with and explain how you might be able to do that. There's also um, several credits that are available with that federal tax credit based on if you're in a low income area or if you're in a community that is in energy transition. If you're a business um, and you own a business, going solar makes even more sense because not only do you qualify potentially for all of those incentives, you also might qualify for the bonus depreciation that the state and federal government has in Illinois and on the in Illinois, Missouri, and on the federal level, which means you can collect the depreciation value all the way up front instead of having to wait and offset it over the course of every, uh, every year. Uh, that allows, you know, a pretty substantial, um, you know, offset for the system up front, which then also helps to pay for the system, you know, the system helps for itself, basically. And there's a couple of other incentives and policies for different local utilities and, you know, uh, local jurisdictions. And you, whenever you connect with your project developer, we can always explain what ones you might qualify for. Thank you, Saxon. We had a question kind of regarding the weather. It's been pretty cloudy this year. Um, what happens kind of uh, to your solar production when the sun doesn't shine all the time? Yeah, well, it's actually really interesting that, you know, you feel like it would be really low production um, and it does have an impact, but severe clouding sometimes can only impact the amount of uh, the amount of production on a system by 10 to 30 percent. I mean, definitely you're not thrilled about that, but it's something where your system is a lot more efficient and the technology has improved significantly where the way the panels work, the way the inverters work, they're able to correct for some of that production loss that happened just because of the way that the panels were built. If it was shady in one spot, the whole array had to act like it was just as shady as that one spot. Now it's able to isolate those areas. And so you have maybe some shading of production here and there's some loss, but the rest of the array that's not shaded is, is gonna be fine. The weather is usually really good in terms of the rain. It actually cleans the panels and allows them to be, uh, it's almost like a self-cleaning oven in the Midwest where it gets warm and then the rain washes it off and then you're basically kind of back and forth. 
Um, snow can actually increase production at times. Uh, if, you, if it's covering your array, that's not always great. Sometimes it ends up falling off the array. You know, either if it's a ground mount, you can scrape it off or on the roof, it'll melt off eventually. But what you're able to do is the sun will reflect off that snow. And so sometimes you can actually see some production gain on things like that. It's a really cloudy day that might not show up exactly like that, but the weather doesn't impact it as intensely in a negative way as you might think. Great, thanks. And we have another question coming up here. Um, if there's, is there ongoing maintenance? And if so, how much would it cost? Yeah, um, the cost on uh, the maintenance, for the most part, your system is designed to be plug and play. You leave it and nothing happens for it. Um, if there's a major issue, uh, then obviously we have a 10 year warranty on our workmanship. We have a 10 year warranty or up to 25 year, depending on um, the type of inverter you have. That's what uh, the kind of the brains of the system is. The panels have a 25 year warranty. The racking usually has a 25 year warranty as well. And besides for that, there's some wires, um, some nuts and some bolts. It's a very simple system actually. And that's what makes it really great. It's designed to be outdoors in the elements, kind of uh, you know, doing a pretty good job of being self-contained. So if you live right next to a field that generates a lot of pollen, sometimes you might notice that it needs a cleaning. Um, you might notice that a branch has fallen on the panels on your roof. And you know, it might make sense to get that removed. Um, Beyond that, if there's any maintenance that really is required, it's it's going to be because something has failed and needs to get replaced, either under warranty, um, or we also have a service department as well that kind of facilitates not only warranty issues, but any other issues that might come up. Um, you know, if someone happens to, you know, drive a truck through a ground mount, that's something that can be fixed. Uh, but in terms of regular maintenance, these are designed to be plug and play, and you don't have to really mess with them that much. Uh, going back to the cloudy question, Saxon here, is it is there any type of production guarantee that Straight Up Solar offers in terms of the, um, if there's two That's so funny that you asked, Eric, there actually is. Uh, well, basically what we do is offer that as a 10 year guarantee that we will take your production that we have promised based on our proposal. We're always incredibly accurate and uh, conservative when it comes down to estimating the production of your system. What we do is we take local weather data, uh, we make sure the shading is accurate based on other obstructions. We take the exact components of your system and design it in an engineering software. Um, basically, all the things that make it where I had to get that certification to be able to go through that process allows me to really have an accurate assessment of what your production is going to be. So when I give you that, that's actually including the average number of rainy, cloudy, snowy, uh, challenging days. We're not just saying it's going to be perfect, beautiful test condition, um, you know, gorgeous sunny day every day. We're actually going to be estimating based on the reality of uh, a local weather station, not even something that is just averaged out. It's something that is your closest airport, some of your closest university, town hall. Uh, and so it's going to be very accurate. We also then have a production for, uh, guarantee basically for 10 years that if for whatever reason, over the course of that year, it falls below what we have guaranteed, we're going to end up coming back and basically paying you back for some of that difference. And just to make sure that you feel like you didn't, you can trust our proposal um, and that we didn't make a mistake in the process. Yeah, let me just see. I think we have one other question here. No, I think that one's been answered. Uh, let's our final question. Um, Saxon regards uh, kind of the concept of net metering. I've heard that I could sell excess energy to the system and get paid for it. Can you explain a little bit how that works? Yeah, yeah. Uh, net metering is one of those things that can be really simple or really complicated. Um, and, and the real simple version is it is the arrangement that is between you and your utility company that uh, defines how you trade electricity back so some utilities basically offer it where over the course of the whole year, they'll just say all of your production is just going to be banked. It's going to be a one for one net metering where if you produce it over the course of the year, we'll give it back to you, send it back if, if you have overproduced for what you use in any given moment. So during the summer, you might be producing more than what you're using because your system, it's really productive. You don't run the AC very often, whatever it might be. 
you have this generated capacity that you've just set back to the grid and they owe you. And at the end of the year, what they'll do is they'll use your entire production in the spring and summer to offset the fall and winter. And in April, they'll just clean the slate and say, all of that basically, well, you're not gonna keep any of those credits, but you're able to use all those for a whole year. That's a one for one net metering um, and on an annual true up. Then on a monthly true up, that would look like at the end of any month, Ameren Missouri basically says, here is how much energy you produced. And if it's lower than what you used, then there's a difference in terms of your bill and you pay a little bit of an electric bill, but it's gonna be smaller obviously with the solar being, you know, having that production. Um, and if the production is larger than your usage, they'll actually write you a check at the end of the month based on whatever figure they have determined that to be worth. Sometimes it's a one for one and they'll say, here's the dollar amount. And you know that's gonna be basically a credit on your bill for the next bill. Uh, sometimes they don't credit you the full amount. Sometimes it's you know one for three or one for two, meaning that for every two kilowatt hours of energy that you use, they'll just give you one, but it's still, that's offsetting that next bill. So it still has a value, just a little bit less. And each utility has a very different policy when it comes down to net metering, which is why it's really important to go with a company that uh, has been in business for a while, that understands the nuances and how they change for every utility. Because at this point, I've worked with maybe 50 different utilities, and I think almost every single one has a different policy on, on some level for some reason than the other one. Uh, and it's all very easy to explain as long as you know kind of what's going on. Uh, and that's part of the proposal too, is you'll have a full understanding uh, with a cash flow analysis of every month, what that looks like with your actual utility bill. Great, well, I think that kind of clears all the questions, Saxon. Thank you all for participating and putting the questions in the, in the chat here. We're gonna wind up, we're gonna have another webinar on May 10th here called What to Expect When You're Expecting. Um, in the Q&A part, you can register for that webinar right now. We're going to be joined by our uh, project developer extraordinaire, Matt Nobby, who's going to talk a little bit. Of, once you sign the contract, what happens in terms of when we come out and evaluate your home for a tech onsite? What happens when our install crew comes to your house? What are they going to be doing in your attic? What are they going to be doing with your electrical panel? And then what's it going to look like in the end? Hopefully you'll be as happy as this man and his dog here smiling about his new solar array here. So I hope you can join us on May 10th at 6 p.m. Again, the registration's on the Q&A for what to expect when you're expected. So uh, that Saxon Metzger, thank you very much for uh, sharing your knowledge with our audience in terms of what's the best way to go solar. I hope you guys have time to go fill out the quiz and start the process with our solar support specialists and start making the clean energy transition in your community. I'm Eric Schneider with Straight Up Solar and I wish you all a good night and thanks for joining us tonight.